Hello and welcome to the 15th of November. Why does this day matter? Why does this day get a special video done for it? Rather than me rehashing some of the greatest hits whilst the grass bay is again just pointlessly sailing around the ocean. Not pointlessly. Actually, it's got a reason for it, but yeah, doesn't quite live up to the surface rate of mantra with it. Well, because it's the 15th of November, and because today is the day when both the SS Africa shell gets sunk and they double back. The grass bay starts heading backwards. And it does this in quite a strange dog legged fashion, but it does it. Interesting controversy from the SS Africa shell, and something you will see arranged in a lot if you watch the movie, is the fact that. Captain Dove, who's a noted navigator amongst merchant seamen, says he's in Portuguese waters. And the grass phase, Lansor says, no, you were in international waters. You can lodge a complaint. It's always good to be able to lodge a complaint after your ship's been sunk. Um, realities, whilst Langsdorff didn't really want to piss off neutral powers, Portugal's probably not one he's going to sweat, so he was probably erring on the side of, I'd like to sink that ship. And it's a grey area, because if you're doing navigation pre-GPS, quite a lot of it is within two to three miles accuracy. And two to three miles is a long way. Now, what is interesting about the Africa shell is her crew get sent let off to their lifeboats, so they go to shore, and they report that they have been taken out by the Admiral Shear. Which causes the Royal Navy even more fun, because they're getting reports, is it the Grass Bay, is it the Shear, is it the Deutschland? They don't know. They know it's something. They know it's one of the Panzer Chief. They don't know which one. And all these reports are causing fun, because each ship has a different commander, and they have a different perspective on what their intelligence says these people are going to be like. So it matters knowing which ship it is. Now, Captain Dove would be aboard the Grass Bay until the 14th of December, after the Battle of River Plate, and once they got to Montevideo. One of the joys of when you're going into neutral harbour, if you're a surface raider, is you have to free all your prisoners. You're not allowed to keep prisoners here in neutral harbour. So that's another win for the Royal Navy from the Battle of River Plate. However, there are some interesting quotes that come out of this one, and I'd like you to draw your attention to these two. There is no mercy from Langsdorff when he is fighting when he is fighting to do, but when he's not fighting, he's a fine gentleman. This is sort of gels with what we've been trying to say, and what I've been trying to say a lot of during these talks. Langsdorff is very much a gentlemanly cruiser commander. Possibly not what you want for a surface raider operating far down south, but probably what you want if you want that surface raider to come back in one piece as your priority. And, well, that's the most interesting one. That he enforced fair and equal treatment. Well, he's required to by law, but it's not something that was expected of commanders. It's one of the interesting things. That does sort of suggest more on the gentlemanly side. This is one of the things I find interesting, and I'm fairly sure it's a misquote, because A, he knows that they weren't going north, they were going south, and it was southern waters, not northern waters, but it is one of the quotes I see often around, so I thought I'd engage with. La Libertad, that he was going into northern waters. But, leaving that to one side, what is really interesting, again, from a surface radar perspective is you do wonder if a Royal Navy officer would have been quite so eager to give such detailed receipts about what was being sunk. Um, they probably would have, as it was legally required, but so keen and eager. There is a certain suspicion uh, which is coming. There. there is a certain focus which comes in this moment. Anyway, so today is the day that the Africa shell is sunk. And the Africa shell is a worthy prize. Look at it. 
That is to get alongside one of the Graf Space launchers. Isn't this a mighty fine ship to sink? This is really a worthy prize of a Deutschland class Panzer Sheet heavy cruiser surface radar. Look at this ship. It's it's tiny. It really is tiny. Frankly, it's one of those smaller kills. Um, you just, to an extent, you're wondering what he's doing. You know, uh, we've been over this again. It's the psychology of the impact. It's the fact that he's got into the ocean. And it's the psychological air and economic warfare going on. But seriously, there's no wonder he has to head to the river plate to try and get some more kills. If he goes home with this is his last kill, he's going to get laughed at. So, that all leads us to the other thing that happens today. The double back. Now, the double back is interesting because as we can see, there's a marker up there which is the 15th of November. Straight after that, he's going south and east. He's heading away from his kill. He's heading out of the shipping lanes. He's heading away from where anyone might see him. And he's going to take another huge sweep south. Huge sweep south to get back into the South Atlantic before heading across to the river plate. He's back to avoiding contact and avoiding anybody coming this way. And actually, that's one of the reasons why he does stay alive so long, but it's also one of the reasons why he gives so much time for the Navy to catch up with him, for the Royal Navy to catch up with him, because he keeps taking the long way around everywhere he goes. Admittedly, if he'd taken the short way round, they might have been waiting for him. But, you know, the long way round is causing all sorts of time loops to develop in the Royal Navy's thinking. Them sort of constantly going, well, he should be here by this date. He should be here by this date. And that's possibly where you get the interesting response from Harwood, because in many ways, he is the calmest officer responding. All are fairly calm, but Harwood is the most laid back in a way in his perception, and this might well be why he managed to work out where he's going and position his force appropriately. Simply because he thought, well, as he's taken his sweet time to get everywhere, then I'm going to add a bit estimate, because I would think a Royal Navy captain would make it at this time, but this surface freighter has been taking longer to go these distances, so therefore the estimate of arrival is that much later. Anyway, whatever happens, we know what's coming, and we know that we are now in the final phase.